All right. So let's see. What did I sign up to talk about? What is the fedora zine? All right. I have five minutes. I'm going to try to keep track of the time myself here. The fedora zine is an idea that I came up with um, a little bit less than a year ago. And um, the idea is to showcase the creative expressions of the fedora community. Beyond that, it is also about having something to give to people who are potentially interested in becoming involved in the fedora community. So something like a recruitment piece. Um, it also just promotes Fedora as like a fun, accessible community. It's kind of like an artsy thing. It's something that's just for fun. Um, beyond that, I think we focus a ton on technical stuff, which is awesome. We're a really brainy group of people. But a nice way to balance that out is to express yourself artistically. So we're accepting things such as poetry, um, doodles, hand lettering, photography, digital artwork, 3D, like blender type artwork, um, short, short stories, um, anything of that nature, anything creative that you have. So the intention is to create an online version that we can um, distribute in that way, but also to create a printed version that we can send out as swag to events and we could send out to um, you know different conferences that our ambassadors might be at so that they're able to continue to promote Fedora. So you can get involved. I am going to drop a ticket in the chat, but for those who are looking at the video, you can go to the design Peugeot repo and there you'll find a ticket about the Fedora Zine. That is ticket 682 on the design repo for those people in the chat. And you don't have to be a design team member to contribute. This is uh, kind of a free for all. Of course, we want to keep it family appropriate, um, but beyond that, Anyone is welcome to be a part and contribute their artwork to this project. So that is my five minute presentation on what is the Fedora zine. So welcome everyone. Today my lightning talk is about uh, getting started with contributing to the Fedora project. I can see that we have a lot of people who are not, who want to contribute back to the Fedora community and they don't have a starting point on getting started on how they would like to contribute so what i'm going to do is just quickly share my screen uh, here you can see that we have a panda who would like to contribute to the fedora project and uh, they are now confused where to go now like we have this operating system development thing you have this community stuff content writing web development translations designing work and all that so what you can do is you can talk to us at Fedora Join SIG where you can talk to us at any of our communication channels. We have created a complete process where, oops, not, yeah, it's uh, here, it's somewhere here. So we have created a whole process where we'll introduce you to Fedora community, open source, and what it's all about. We have some awesome resources there. So if you would like to get started, you just have to post your self-introduction. We are going to help you create your Fedora account system ID and all that stuff. So you can communicate to us at our mailing list, our IRC channel, our Telegram chat. We have a matrix page, Discord page. So you can just come up to any of these communication channels, share your self-introduction, and we'll be more than happy to get you introduced. So there's another exciting thing going on, uh, which is an excellent starting point for a lot of us to get started with. And that's about quality assuring all the software stuff that Fedora creates. Uh, like 
a lot of people feel that they have to be an excellent programmer or developer to get started with contributing to an open source and operating system project. You don't. I am not the excellent programmer and stuff, but I still do contribute wherever I can. You can contribute, start with queuing. So quality assuring means that there's this test day going on organized by the Fedora quality assurance team in which uh, you it's about Fedora Chorus and the Chorus is a Fedora's addition, uh, emerging addition. And it's like in the Linux ecosystem, it's like pushing things really forward. So you can get started with contributing by queuing Fedora Chorus releases. So Fedora Chorus recently branched to Fedora 33. You can grab the artifacts from here. We have like a stream release system there. So you can just get the next release and uh, you can add your results here. And we have these well-documented uh, well documented processes where you can install on a virtual machine. Here's how you can install that on a virtual machine. Here's how on bare metal. If you are using any cloud, we would be more than happy to have cloud results as well. If it's AWS, you can get the process and steps here, extra scale. And with some advanced configurations, upgrades, miscellaneous stuff. So it's all about shit. It's about you wherever you would like to get started with contributing. We have these well documented, well documented processes on getting contributed. So it's actually be running till twelve. So you'll have these Fedora test day channel where you can talk to us, and in Fedora Chorus channel where you can talk to us and ask questions. If you face any issues, you can talk to people there. Don't be afraid to talk there. So this is what my talk about. I'm going to drop the link to the Fedora Chorus test day here as well. So thank you, everyone. If uh, someone would like to talk to me, feel free to ping me as well and the Fedora joint team anywhere in these channels. Oops, awesome. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Thanks, this year. Hello. So, welcome everyone. So, this was a talk uh, that was gonna be uh, initially be provided by Edward Lucena, who was the founder of the i3 SIG, who did all the basic self building stuff. So, uh, now as they are not here yet, so I'm gonna be the one proceeding with that. So, thank you. So, what the i3 sig is the i is the special interest group for fedora in for fedora for the enthusiasts or who are working on i3 window manager for x11 so it's a tiling window manager about uh, where you have these windows they are in gnome kde you by default tend to get them in a floating way but with fedora with i3 it's all tiling so you tend to save up a lot of space uh, so currently, our first goal is to create a Fedora i3 respin and uh, get and apply for making it a an official spin project. So we have this current work going on on our uh, kickstart. So we have these kickstarts here where we are working on creating the kickstarts for the Fedora i3 spin where you get all the i3 window manager by default and you don't get a lot of dependencies that we, you tend to get on a GNOME. So it's like way, way simpler and uh, way not so resource consuming because like with GNOME compared to GNOME and KDE, these, are these, uh, these spins consume a lot of resources, but with i3 window manager, it's like, it's just a simple window manager running with no other applications. But we are trying to discuss on how many applications do we get, do we want to get in the spin. So you can find our kickstarts here. If someone would like to contribute to the kickstart side of things, they're more than have welcome to. We have this uh, document where you have this spin design goals here this is our design goals this is our kickstart so if you would like to help with the kickstarts uh, here it is uh, you have we have our workflow our change log how we use the basic lxd and xfc ones and build up on that 
and create a concise, clean i3 window manager re, uh, re and So every we have our meetings every two weeks, so you can see our meetings here. So it happens every twice a week at 16 UTC on our communication channels. So this these are our communication channels on IRC. A beautiful mailing list. So these are our communication channels. If you would like to contribute places like we are currently working, where so you can have these package groups and install the different packages uh, with i3. So we are working on that as well. If you would like to help in, on the comp side of things, you are most welcome to. And the last thing about that is we have uh, our issue tracker here. So actually uh, looking forward to the Fedora 34 change proposal and hopefully make it a spin by that time. Uh, there are going to be a lot of discussion that will happen after that to make it an official spin. But for now, the respin SIG is helping us to build our kickstarts into ISO images. And everything is from inside Fedora repositories. So it's way simpler and simpler. So if you would like to help with any of that, if you would like to just see what we are working on, we have our meetings bi-weekly. It's on IRC and on Jitsi for videos. So you're more than welcome to join any of them for uh, just talk to us. And if you would like to just see our progress, we are more than welcome to have you there. Thank you. I should stop soon. Thank you for joining. Thanks again this year. <laughs> As always. Welcome. Ready to jump in. Uh, cool. And another thing. Another thing. I just saw that Justin had one talk on um, Moat. Basically, I am where I am. I, Ramya, and uh, Akashdeep and Justin are leading that stuff. So if we have any of them, I, here so they can talk to us about the meeting uh, application or else i could go ahead and just provide an update on what's happening on that side of things we are rebuilding the moat project and this making is, it more efficient this session is actually nasir's showcase of all the stuff that he works on <laughs> so if we have justin Ram not only give him a badge. A I do badge. work on the badges platform as well. Yeah, he works on badges too, of course. <laughs> Having a badge like Nasser talked on was the only one who talked at Lightning Talk. <laughs> it's true, Nasir does work on everything. That's um, some... Yeah, sure. If you want to give a quick update on the mode thing, go ahead. Okay. So welcome everyone again, and uh, I'm just gonna quickly see Fedora Infra mode. Uh, thanks Alberto, thanks Neil, thanks Yuna. So it's gonna be loading now. So welcome everyone. Uh, it was a lightning talk about the mode and in, an adventure into the Fedora le infrastructure legacy applications. So it was on Python 2, Python 2 around uh, some weeks ago, but uh, we have some people in the Fedora community who were interested in getting it into Python 3 and uh, making sure it doesn't go away because that's an essential part of our Fedora infrastructure because whenever we have these meetings, you have this meet bot thingy here where all of your meetings are logged and you can find them here so we didn't want this application to go away it's a flask application it's way simpler and it's on python 3 now so congratulations on that shares between topics <laughs> so we have these current open issues here we are working in sprints so you can find our spin our sprints here so we have this project here i would like to give a plus one to all the awesome work that ramya akash deep and uh, justin and all the contributors are putting in to keep it uh, to keep it new and keep it good 
So for the current sprint, we are focusing on create containerizing the application. So you get these fair functional builds of the project. So we are currently working on Akash Deep is a toxic coder is currently working on that. I uh, for the current sprint, I actually worked on fixing and making sense of the config.json file about using memcache d as a con as a cache place. So we are using file cache now in the infrastructure. So I had to like discuss, get through all of that and see what we are currently working on. So for the next sprint, we would be actually working on determining the final fate of memcache d in mode. Like, do we want to keep this as a dependency in mode application because we are currently not using it in the Fedora infrastructure? Or do we want that in the development side of things or, or we would like to maintain that? And uh, for the awesome stuff that happened in the past few weeks is that we actually got the Docker, uh, Docker files configuration, the container file. We I did work on this one. We have this rep text thing that works in the meeting log perfectly now. And in the past few days that those things that got merged were we, it was running on version 0.1 of Flask about a week ago. So we did work on this one and uh, version bumping it to 1.1.2. So it's like on the latest Flask now. We are the pip n now we use Python 3.9. And now the documentation also runs on Python 3. We have the CI modernized container. This is actually not about containerization, but to ease the development experience and for people to get easily involved with the, with the, the mode project. We actually used pip env to create a, to not for the virtual environment and install all the packages there. So you have this way efficient and simpler way of managing dependencies with Python. If someone would like to contribute to modes documentation, I'm not sure if I'm able to find, I have that handy, but uh, here's the GitHub link where you can fork the project. We have a lot of good first issues available. If you would like to see, if you would like to get started with, like uh, we have this uh, good first issues like usability that requires like changing CSS, a lot of things. You can talk to us at our communication channels. That's actually Fedora mode. I'm going to drop the links here afterwards. I don't have them <laughs> recent, have them now. So it's the meeting, uh, meeting page, the meeting project that we are currently working on and modernizing to making sure it doesn't go away. And uh, all the legacy stuff from Python 2 and Flask 0.1 to Flask 1.1.2 and Python 2.7 to Python 3.9 now. So it's all latest now and it's working pretty well. So thank you everyone for joining this one as well. Uh, let me know if you have any questions regarding any of my past talks or this one. Thank you, Leslie. And then it's uh, shameless. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So right. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> I need to be validated. Hello, Matthew. Hello. What do you need to be validated on? Do you remember that? <laughs> remember that shoes video? It was like early internet. It was like shoes. Oh my God, shoes. And then the guy's like, yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. at the beginning, they're like, you know, he has a, or she has a brother and the brother gets um, a, a computer and a car. Wow, thanks, mom and dad. And then the the girl gets nothing or something like that. Like, anyway, sorry, way off topic. Is Why is Arch Linux archived in the Fedora Meat Box? Oh, I'm getting ans questions and answers all in the chat. So I just thought we'd come on real quick, do a wrap up, say hey, and uh, take any questions or talk about how we thought it went. I was thinking like today based on this, like based on where the wizards turn out and this, like maybe it should be on one day. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that's probably right too. Um, like especially one, one long day long event kind of thing. I'm gonna be a little contrary. 
Okay. Be I think concurrent. if we would, I think if we had more content planned for today, that might have helped. Because yeah. I'm definitely sort of torn on the like one day is a lot, especially for people who have like their jobs to do during the day. And I, so I like the idea of having one weekday, one weekend day to try and get to appeal to as many different of our demographics as we can. Cool. But it was definitely very Friday loaded. So I, I wonder if that was part of it. Right. Well, I did that because I, I had a sense that more people would be able to be there because it was a weekday. So I found that people are actually a little bit like Friday is a really good day to get like same for Nest and like Fedora Women's Day, like Friday was the best day. So yeah. just based on how some of the other ones have gone. But I do agree with you if there was more content today. Um, I just wanted to kind of give most of those presenters a chance to do it during their work hours. Um, but no, we could do it like that next time and see what happens. We could also try it on a one day. I mean, we have so many releases. Right. We can experiment with this. Um, Stay around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I'm kind of thinking if we make this a regular thing we do every release, maybe like a half day, an intense half day on uh, either a weekday or a weekend. I could be um, more regimented with the moderation. Yeah. Like it could be one long, like it could be like a couple longer sessions and people just come up and I moderate it like a little bit more like two minute warning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and right. So that's a cool. Maybe, maybe not even have breakout sessions, just have it all on one stage and yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's what I was saying. Like, do like morning session, afternoon session, kind of thing. Uh, there's a question in the chat for you, Matt Matthew. There when, is. When Where? is the kernel five point nine? Um, I am not sure. Um, I think it's going through the regular kernel processes. Um, Yeah, um, it, it sometimes takes a little bit of time, and you know, especially this time of year, everything is a little bit slower. So I am I, I, I don't know offhand where the kernel team is on that. I know that um, the I think that um, the five eight series ended early, um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, I, I don't know the answer offhand. Ben, do you have any other insight on that one? I. Uh, I'm looking at Bodhi right now. I don't see an update for 5.9 in there for 33. I do see a build in Koji, but it looks like uh, 5.10 is just coming instead. I know um, um, if you have an NVIDIA card, you're going to want to hold off because NVIDIA doesn't have their drivers working still. Um, we officially do not hold back our kernel for NVIDIA not keeping up, but that's something to be aware of as well. So I'm not going to make a whole poll, but for people in the chat right now, what was your favorite part? Was it the informational sessions, the pub quiz, uh, hallway tracks, or the fun events? Or maybe I should make a poll. I mean, make a poll. Let's do it. You make the poll, Matthew, please. Okay. <laughs> yes. I will. Great poll. Make a poll. Neil says to make a poll. Cool. Um, any other random questions or comments or thoughts about release party? <laughs> um, I had a really, really fun time. Uh, we had a great turnout. Like I was mentioning that yesterday, but just again, uh, we can say the final number was 223 registrants, 106, 166 attendees, and it is 74.4% attendance, which is awesome. That's really good. Basically 75% attendance. So we had a lot of great. we had a lot of people showing up uh, to celebrate with us and like all of this the hard work that we've done in the last six months. So super excited about this. We're gonna get videos up um, with some time, and you know, we gotta talk to people who may or may not be on video slash audio right now with us and see if they'd be willing to help. Um, luckily, there's not nearly as many videos. <laughs> So that's cool. We'll find somebody. Um, and yeah, we'll put up a blog post with some of the polls. 
Tell me more of the poll options. Poll. Oh, you want some readouts of the poll? Yeah, we had some pretty good ones. Um, so, you know, someone took a screenshot of this and put it on Twitter. What editor you use? Vim. And I think this might have been a legit one. Unlike our poll at Nest, which had two options or something. This one is Vim with 35 votes. Joe wasn't on that poll, though, so it's invalid. Gotcha. Next is GUI Base Editor with 14 votes, Emacs with 13, Nano with 12, and no, Ed, Ed's there. No one took that. <laughs> um, I was also going to talk about SED, and I forgot to talk about SED, the stream editor. Still very important. Hi, baby fiasco. Um, have you attended a conference on Hopin before today? Uh, most people, it's like a half and half, I don't know. 25 people were saying this is their first experience, but overall, everyone loves this platform. We have 25, 42, 67 votes saying that they're really enjoying it. So I'm glad that we invested in this for the year and uh, like definitely give us feedback. I plan to send out a survey um, how we can make it better. <laughs> Um, a thousand percent yes. Twenty-one people are wearing pajamas. Unsurprisingly, four people are questioning whether or not they oh, I, themselves. I forgot to put polls in the poll. <laughs> um, are you an early bird or night owl? It's a majority of night owls with thirty-six votes, but there's twenty-five people who are both. I'm one of those people. Can I tell you what my <laughs> I slept after the event yesterday, 4 till 10, and then 2 till 4. Here I am. What will happen next? I don't know. <laughs> what was I doing from 4 till 10 in the morning? Mostly laundry. But anyway, um, how familiar you are with the change process? I don't really know much about it. You know? I think that's actually a good thing to see there. I think we need to do a little bit more with the change process. Like, that was the second highest vote. So I get the basic idea was 29, but then 25 was I really don't know much about it. Ben, that's a talk people for me. you. People are me. Oh, <laughs> yes, five six. people are Ben. Six is six I now. <laughs> I guess there's five clones. Favorite programming language? Python by a long shot. I'm not surprised. Um, is English your first language? Out of the 88 votes, 61 was no. So the majority of folks showing up at this conference were not uh, native English speakers, which is really, really cool. We tried to make some hallway tracks, the Spanish hallway track, I think actually did really well. Um, we also made a Hindi uh, track, but I didn't really see much activity there. Maybe we need to do a bit, a bit more promoting in the, the Indian community. I know we have a ton of people there. Um, but if there was like other languages that people would want, that is something we can totally do. You can request during the session or during the events, hey, can we put up a Russian or what French or whatever it might be just so that you guys have a place to chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to ignore the horse. Um, <laughs> so this is like a pretty uh, contested subject. How do you prefer to do chat? Um, I actually was very curious about the outcome of this. And I'm going to say it's close, but Telegram won. 32 votes for Telegram. I received in 27. So that's pretty clear indication we have a, a strong presence there. Um, Wow, 57 votes. This is ever, like 57 people said this is their first Fedora release party. So that is yep. pretty cool. This is the first one that anybody could come to because they tend to be, you know, little little local events. So fair enough. If you, there wasn't one in your neighborhood, what were you gonna do? Right. And last but not least, what is your favorite of the four Fedora foundations? 43 votes. How can I just pick one? Followed shortly by friends, well, distantly by friends. <laughs> Less than half the votes. But uh, so, yeah, that's a little bit of the poll readout. Yes, our presence is uh, 
on Matrix is pretty new. I mean, we've been around on there for a while, haven't we? A couple of years. Like the design team's been there, okay. right? When yeah, we. I was on there two or three years ago, I think. The social hour was the first time it really got more broad usage to pe with people, so that's right. pretty new. Do people in the chat come to the social hour? Is there anything we could do to make that more fun? I'm just trying to bounce ideas off and get some uh, yeah. feedback here. <laughs> yeah. But the social hour is something Matthew and I like love to do. And at first it was like really popular. And we're getting like 10, 12, 13 people showing up every time. Now we have like a solid, you know, the usuals crew, which is great. We like our usuals, we Neil. Not just like uh, them, we love them. Uh, that's right. <laughs> but we want to uh, come up with something. Is it the timing? Is it? Is it what we're, you know, what we're doing? Are people just kind of just like totally burnt out on video chatting? And um, I don't know, maybe I'm asking too many questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think some people went off and are actually doing some more sessions too. So we're kind of just chatting. Um, that's actually winning in that poll uh, as a favorite part. So that's that's okay. Polls are actually the best. <laughs> well, that one's but, only yeah, scroll down option. beyond that. Crap. All right. But I want to click the funny thing, but I'm not sure that's what I actually enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Maybe you should do it's another just one. It's so fun. I want to click it. <laughs> Damn it. Ten people voted for us doing nothing or not. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why you can't be funny, Matthew. Now you have to be. All right. Well, anyway, I don't have anything else to say. Oh, there's See, a question. There are a lot of reasons chat. Matthew can't be funny. And there are reasons that Ben can't oh, be mean. Okay, so someone's oh. asking me if they're make... okay. I think I might have to go and assist uh, to get some recording happening in the other session. But okay. good times. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you very much. It was. Uh, I, I love Fedora. <laughs> you all are so so amazing. Yes, we um, had a great time. I did. Made, made it fun. Time. And also, congrats, Bye, everybody. This is Ben's party, everybody. That's not. It totally is. See you. <laughs> see y'all. <in>, uh, <laughs> Bye. See y'all in April. Yeah. There you go. <laughs>